Yo, we got a busy day today. My hair. <laughs> so, first thing, okay, it's not a content creating day, but we have lots of things to, we have a video to finish planning out, which is the travel gear video that I mentioned yesterday. Then I have to go get an iPhone and a couple of other bits for these videos. But I think the main thing that I was, I've been stuck on since yesterday is I was editing this video and we had about three and a half hours of footage and I don't want to cut out things because I'm just I'm speaking what's on my mind but I want to I don't want it to make it I don't want it to be a real waste of your time like I don't want to have the 20 30 60 second pauses in there so we're trying yesterday's video with it cut, seeing what it looks like going for the, I don't know what you call it, like hyper authentic. That doesn't work, does it? We've gone a hybrid. So minor edits just to give enough that it's not just taking your time for granted. But I might try, I don't know when, might try just no cuts no cuts in a video like this is what the timeline currently looks like so every break in here is a different cut now I've done that just to take out the pauses I don't know it's it's very natural for me to sit here and think about what I'm doing for a short amount of time before I actually make a decision and I I feel like those should be in there. But I'm not the one watching these videos back. It's you. So. Anyway, it is yesterday's video is exporting. Two and a half hours long. Yeah. Let's get an iPhone ordered. So go and pick it up. Apple.com. I hate bloody hate wearing a hat with a when you knock on the headrest like wearing a hat driving. Terrible. Nothing worse. Absolutely nothing worse. Well, I'm not driving up to Nebraska for it. That's crazy. Order in the next five minutes and it delivers within two hours from the store. For nine dollars. That's wild. I want to break this down because I always used to think that that would be a waste of nine dollars. But let me look. This is my other one that I keep down low for Ruger because he... Makeup style smashes the nib. I love, I think a whiteboard is one of the best investments you can make. I flipping love it. All right, so let's say on average you work eight hours a day. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, all right? So you have eight, eight, what am I doing? So this is our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, surprisingly. Okay, and let's say over the course of a day, you earn $80, just for round numbers, make this easy. That means in hour one, you're making $10. Make this super clean. All right, so you have the ability to make $10 per hour throughout the day. So 
This is what's called your opportunity cost. I don't mean to be schooling you, sorry, I'm just interested. So you could make $10 that day. Now let's take this hour of time. You could make $10, but actually you need to use this one hour of time to go to Apple. So you're gonna spend an hour of your time and make zero dollars. Or you could work through this time, earn $10, but then you also have to spend $9 for the shipping. You end up saving yourself a dollar, but this time here gets you closer to your goal. So you've invested another hour on the way to your goal. Like so that's the way I think about it. So it's like, even if I make a video that isn't monetizable, so I can't make any money off of it, but it does extremely well. I've got in front of new people and new people have seen my videos to decide whether they like what I'm making or not. And they're then invested for my future. Does that make sense? I'm finding this, I can't, I'm finding this so hard to concentrate. People across the road in our cul-de-sac are getting their roof redone and all I can hear is banging in my head. Now, I always felt, I, I used to have this boss when I worked at a software place out of college and he would always order food. And I remember thinking it was just up the road. It's like a, it'd probably take you 15 minutes there and back, getting in the car, doing everything. And I used to think, God, what a, what a waste of money. He's paying the $6 or whatever for delivery and he could just go and get it himself. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized that 15 minutes of time to him is worth more than $6 for the delivery. And I think that's the question we should be asking ourselves as we get into this nice position where money's not that much of an issue and your time, and you start to realize that your time is more valuable, then you start to, to balance this question out. Well, that was quite the segue, so I guess I'll add this to bag and get someone to deliver it. <laughs> In the time I spent explaining that, I missed the uh, delivery window. <laughs> After all that, it doesn't even have delivery in two hours to here. So I have to go and get it. All right, now before we go and do some more shopping, Put my socks on so you don't have to see my gammy feet because we've been on the floor. But I made socks. Well, I didn't make them, obviously. Had them made with my Odd Daisy logo on the side. And it took me a couple of rounds to get them, but I really wanted some that were super comfy. What is this doing here? And in the end, we got some. Surprisingly. All right. So for this testing viral travel gadgets video, I have about, I had about 20 items. I was gonna make like a YouTube meta video, but I think now I'll just switch it over to doing multiple TikToks. And then we'll obviously go along for the journey. So <laughs> I, uh, I bought the Shrek Crocs. They're not straight. I bought the Shrek Crocs because I thought those would be funny to wear on a plane and then see my dad's reaction when he picks me up. But those are delayed, so they're not going to arrive on time. But then I also bought these for another video. Just look at the state of that. How do you get them open? Okay, see you later. Bro, I thought there were no wheels. I 
I also thought it would be really funny in the video to get one of those scooter suitcases. Now, if I was going to be making the video that I originally had planned, I thought that would be really good. And I found some lady selling one for cheap. Can't imagine what happened to her kid. Bro, hella steezy. <laughs> but these might be funny to roll around the airport in. Serious life hack. All right, so we've got tea things. I'll check that off the list. I bought flatulence pads because you know people are always farting on airplanes. But I don't. I can't fart, fart on demand for some reason. <laughs> so I bought fart spray. But I don't think I can try this on the airplane. I don't think that's fair to people. Like I'm all in for a good prank, but when it inconveniences other people and they weren't a part of it, I feel like that's. I don't feel like that's right. Ordered a lot of stuff from Timo as well. You know, also... I also don't like the idea of... What do I not like? Think. I don't like the idea of forcing other people to be in your video. Like, I'm perfectly fine with being on camera, but not, not that many people are that way. And I think shoving a camera in their face is, I'm not going to go as far as to say rude, maybe it is, but that's not how I want to make my content. Oh yes. Oh yes. What is this? <laughs> a footrest hammock. <laughs> Let's mark these off, shall we? Um, a mini iron. Don't know why I went with that one. I think I guess I thought it would be funny. Oh. I bought croc lamps. Why? You want see them? Stop it, I know you're excited. <laughs> Come on, you... Willy. Why aren't you going in, mate? Hell yeah, those are crazy bright. See, now I want to wear my Crocs on the plane and have these for going down the aisle. Airport shoes. Airplane shoes. I think this is my carry-on closet. Oh, dude. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about this. This was going to be like the crux to the whole video. The video is going to be that I'm a very experienced traveler and I wanted people to, I wanted validation that I was an experienced traveler. So I bought this, it kind of goes around your, it's going to be so uncomfortable. What am I doing? So I go around you like this and then loop here, haven't quite figured it out yet. And they're like, passport please. And then I'm just expecting them to go, that kid travels a lot. He's a badass. 
stay back. And I'd be like, yeah, that's right. I'm basically trying to work out what are the bits that I still need to get. So carry on closet. I didn't get that. Weird neck pillows. Don't need that. Hydrating face mask. Got that. <laughs> Instant camera. Where is that? Here. Why do I have that readily accessible? Let's charge that. Portable footrest, yes. My bidet. <laughs> Scooter luggage, I think we're gonna switch that out. I think the only thing I need, I just need to get some Lunchables, I think that's it. No, because my wife got me bacon for bacon sandwiches. I tell you what, these times are changing, yeah? Where people don't think marriage is a good thing anymore. And I'm not, I'm not advocating for marriage and the whole contract of it. But having someone that you can talk to and spend your time with, and someone who's really there for you, I highly overrated. I think in this time and age, people overlook it and they think being single is incredible. Yeah, being single was cool. I mean, I've been out of that for about oh gosh 13 no 12 years <laughs> and having someone is way better right and then the communication i'd sorry i don't mean to go on but we need to go to apple and we need to go to walmart and we need to get some snacks for my parents at the side real side quest for my family. Yes. All right, I got some time before I have to go. We got some time before the pickup. So I started a whole new channel for this. And we're slightly lagging on the videos so that, you know, in case something comes up. So here I'm kind of making parts of the YouTube channel. Don't really know. So odd bright YouTube designs banner what the hell is that? The hell is even that? Mate, I look heifer when I do this. Let's keep that, keep that one down. So is that, is that going to open? What just happened? All right. YouTube designs banner. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I try to upload a Photoshop document. I literally made this maybe a week and a half ago, and I changed my tack. You do another side quest, me jinkies. You. The main quest, I still do want to play in the 2024 Sidemen charity match. You know, this is what I was thinking about yesterday, is I've been asked by my management, what's the why behind your side quests? And to me, it is because I really, really recently put two and two together here, which I've been doing this whole time, which is I really love making stuff, like making videos, taking on these ideas and doing them. So the main quest is making videos and the side quests are the small things that I like doing. Show I, uh, I, going from that, I don't know what the freaking booby sausages to put in here. I just, that's embarrassing. Yeah, maybe I'm just not, I don't need to put that there. And it's just, it's just that. File, export, export, I don't know, let's do save for web, legacy. Don't really know the difference. Just know it's smaller. All right, let's see what 
you think of this? Wow. <laughs> That's banging. What's my description? Thoughts of an ADHD riddled content creator? Let's keep it basic, shall we? I think my, my goal for this is that it's just, it's me doing the things that I need to as a content creator and wanting just to share my thoughts as I do them. I don't want to be doing anything extra as of yet for this. I don't want to make things up just for this video. You know what I haven't figured out is thumbnails for this. Do I just go with a screen grab from the video? I want to make it low maintenance, but I also, I want them to be decent enough. What a load of bull bags, because obviously that's what I would want. Like, what was that video about? I might just put it live today if I can think of a thumbnail. It was about the stretching, wasn't it? Let's go incognito mode and then on YouTube and we'll just find random videos that I think look good. I think this is, <clears throat> this is something that every creative person, I'm pretty sure every creative person does this, where you don't steal directly. Like I don't just look at this thumbnail and think, cool, that will work for my video and just make the same thing. You take this thumbnail plus, I don't know, this satisfying video thumbnail and you find ways to put them together or take the ideas and put them together to make up what is your style. Don't tell me there's a second Breaking Bad coming. I mean, do tell me. Okay, looks, yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, right. Friggin' Mr. Beast two years ago. I bought everything in five stores. That's pretty nuts, isn't it? Okay, turn off the audio. So yeah, this video was about becoming super stretchy. Right, it's about the process. All right, I think I'll just mock up a few thumbnails. This is, as I open Procreate, this is one from the, what's meant to be the travel video. So <laughs> that's me on the scooter and just kind of the layout, what I would send to someone to design because I'm not good enough. Uh, create new, oh goodness, yeah. You know, I feel like there's something wrong with making a a meta type of thumbnail. And by that, I mean like, it's an exaggeration of me stretching because it gives the impression the whole video is about me trying to stretch as much, as big as possible, which I guess it is, but the video is mostly about sharing the content creation process. Maybe, maybe that's it. I do the stretching like me on a, let's change the color here. So what if I'm on this table? being stretched out, so... And then from there you have, like, I don't know, ropes that are coming to my hands. And then you have me, the plonker in pink, who is here, my arms are stretched out and so are my legs, and then I have this massive, yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> it's my inappropriate 
sense of humor is not even funny. I know it's not even funny, but I just can't help myself from doing it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we make like, a, I use AI to make a dungeon. So we do that. I, d I don't know why I'm showing you that. It's absolute doo-doo, isn't it? All right, let's start recording the... All right, let's get a new document. Let's do the thumbnail, 1280 by 720. I'll have to get a photo of me stretched out. But let's go to Google and find a torture stretch bed. Torture rack, that's it. Bed sounds a bit luxurious. Maybe I should have thrown in orthopedic as well. Viking dungeon with wooden torture rack. I bet it's not gonna like torture. Yeah, view guidelines. Medieval rack. What if I do it on, I wonder if Firefly. Okay, let's just do Medieval Dungeon. I don't, yeah, I, I want photo. Let's do photorealistic, high detail, Medieval Dungeon. And the size we wanna be widescreen, I guess. I, I flipping love AI. I love what we can do with it. What other sites have I used? Okay, so that has turned out all right. Playground AI, let's do torture rack. Medieval dungeon with torture rack. Adobe probably had some issues with torture. Can't say I blame them too much. What are we doing here, pal? That looks pretty good. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes. I think I just broke my back. I put the Heelys on. We're gonna give them a go. <laughs> this is gonna be a bad idea because almost just wrecked myself. You don't look very safe. Go on, UPS, dude. You can go. Oh, yeah. Best friends, him and I. All right, let's take a second to talk about content creation and the effect it has on you. Your, oh my gosh. That's no bloody good, is it? Might be better. All right, yeah, let's talk about content creation and the effect it has on your mental fitness. I don't know, uh, yeah. The dopamine hit of when a video does well is amazing. You feel so good. But then when you spend a lot of time on a video and it doesn't you know, do as well as the one before, it hurts. Now imagine being in a job where you, you got feedback immediately from a piece of work you've done. And that feedback is either amazing work, well done, you did really well, or it's, this was, this was terrible. You should probably just like never do that again. It's really demoralizing, but, and, and I think there are a lot of times where you don't know what the problem is. Like this is such a, this is such a new industry that we don't know the ins and outs of it. It's an algorithm and we're working with people. I think a lot of people think you're fighting an algorithm and you have to give the algorithm what the algorithm wants, but you're not, you're trying to feed people what they want, which is why people 
have you know stay in a niche or they have exactly the same type of content each time because they know that you know if that piece of content did well that people are going to watch that again so i really wanted to stay out of a single niche because i feel i mean i find more things fun than just one topic and in a way i feel like it's inauthentic to only make content about one topic you're interested in and you know not everyone has to be authentic you can be auth what am i trying to say you can be authentic about the content you're making even if it is within a single niche but it's not to the extent of how authentic you can be right like, there's still so much missing And so in my humble opinion, I think that mating, making whatever video, whatever content you like, is how you should do it. What does that mean? I think the most authentic thing you can do is make content about something you enjoy. Now, I enjoy experiences, I enjoy learning things, I enjoy trying things, which is where we are here. Which is great, because content creation is all about trying new things that you don't know how to bloody do. <laughs> I don't want to tell you, I almost freaking ruined my back. Oh my gosh. Sorry. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's busy. Yeah. What am I looking for? Candy, sweets. We just zip them in here. Just listen. That is not the sound of a real man. <laughs> Don't care about being a real man, obviously. My mum likes Sour Patch Kids. My dad doesn't like sweets at all, so those and... These little chocolates with toffee in them, what are they called? Please have them. I didn't come all the way. I was pretty sure you guys had them here. You know what? My grandma always used to give us Werther's Originals, so I'm going to get a bag of those for him. It's a yellow box, I know that. I can't see it. That was a good one. Maybe I'll just get her some dog treats and hope she doesn't know the difference, just thinks there's something new. Dude, this is gonna kill me that I don't know the name of these. Hi ma'am, how you doing? Good. I'm good with that bag, thank you. Sorry. No, I'm okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. I got the door. I just friggin Healy away. Oh my goodness. Um, ow. I, you know, I used to think it was really rude of people not to, you know, ask you how you're doing when you say how you're doing. But then I started to realize that actually, maybe someone just doesn't want to speak. Maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're not trying to be rude. I filled up my water before I left and I forgot it. The point I'm trying to make out of that is that you don't know what other people are going through. And so to have expectations of how they should act 
I don't think is right. Now, I'm guilty of it. I used to think that way all the time. And then I just got, you know, way better than everyone in this world. That's you, dude. <laughs> How do I get out of here? I guess I'm doing a Yui. We're right on time. Right on time. Yeah, yeah. Product. <laughs> Go ahead, head over here to my order pickup sign. I'm gonna get somebody to bring it to you, okay? Sounds good, thank you. All right, no problem. I really like the idea of these. I think that looks sweet. But, it's just, I got a computer. Don't need a second one. Would be nice though. All set, cool, thank you, you too. Going in? Yes. Okay. You're welcome. Hello. Stay here. Thank you. You too. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Little does she know I won't be using it. So I bought this iPhone for a video for Anchor that I'll be. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> that I'll be making next week. And if you'd have told me that I'd be like this, this by no means is a big brand deal. And when I say that, this also covers the budget for getting an iPhone. Now, if you'd have told me two years ago that I'd be able to make a video where the budget, like I can go and get an iPhone and still have some left over, I would have told you. <laughs> God. Some cringy things. I would have just, I've been like, nah, no chance. Like, I'm good with sharing the amounts that brands paid. Um, it's a done deal, the product's on the way. Well, it's not a done deal because the contract's not signed. But depending on what's in the contract, I'll share the numbers. I feel like there's no reason to be cagey about this stuff. That's a flipping willy sausage. Now, this is a tip for you creators out there. Until the contract is signed, you do not have a deal. Don't book anything, don't do anything. The only reason I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm an exception, okay? Like, do as I say, not as I do. In this case, I'm going to be out of the country and I need this phone in case the contract comes through and it, it came through right this second. And I can return it within 14 days if the contract isn't signed. So I'm like hedging my bets here. I can't tell you how many, up, up until the last like two or three weeks, I've been doing all negotiations on my own. And one, it's so much work and it's so demoralizing. And the number of contract, not contracts, the number of offers that have come in that seem to progress all the way, then it's like, we've decided to pause on this campaign like after you've had the negotiations about money, posting date and all this kind of stuff. And in some way I can understand the brands are trying to figure out what to do, like how much it's going to cost them. What's the timeline looking like? What kind of creators can we get? Gator nipple. But I think a good idea. I mean, I like, I like the negotiation part. I like the challenge of that. I like trying to figure it out. I like the psychology of it, but what do I want to focus my time on? Because me spending time on the contract negotiations and whatnot and outreach is additional time that I can either take that away from the time I use to make content. I can take it uh, as time away from my family or I can take it as time away from enjoyment. And it doesn't supersede, it doesn't come above any of those things. And so I'm, I'm okay with asking someone else who's better at it than me to try and take care of that. And in return, they get a 20% cut of anything that comes in. Which, my biggest deal was this unbelievable to me, okay? I think it was the biggest by a long way. It was about 
over a year ago now, maybe almost like a year and a half ago, one to fourteen and a half thousand dollars. Crazy money. One TikTok to be reposted on Instagram, three months of ad usage so that they could they could put money behind the video to run it as an ad. I think that was it. And at the time I had about 250,000 followers on TikTok. I was still in the photo and video niche. And I had, I don't know, maybe 30,000 followers on, 40,000 followers on Instagram. That was unreal. And I mean, just a thought, we can go into this further another time, but talking about your rate, how much you should charge for a video. People normally just give you a, a dollar amount. They say like oh, one grand or $200. But I think you need to work it out on RPM, uh, rate per midi. So what do you charge per thousand views? So if I'm up until recently, my average on TikTok was 1.4 million average views per video. And so then a low RPM is about $5, mid-range 10, and then extremely high, you're looking at somewhere between 15 and $20 per 1,000 views. So that's the way I think you should, if, I mean, I don't know if, I don't even know if you make content, if you're re remotely interested in it, what on earth, why can't you speak? This is good for me. Speaking out loud, this is good for me. I will improve my speech one day. <laughs> I also think about this as purely a business. While I will make my content because I enjoy making my content, I'm not just in it to make money. I would like to make a lot of money. Let me get that very, let's be very clear about that. So when a brand approaches me, I essentially have advertising space. Like I've worked hard to create the same type of content to garner an audience that believe and trust in what I'm doing, that they're going to be entertained and that they're going to receive information that's honest. So when a brand comes to me and says, we want to post on your profile, they don't care about me. Why would they care about me? All they care about is the way or, like, forget me in the equation, but the way a video that is on my account is created, they want their product or service in that. That's all it is. And honestly, a lot of the time, it's not even a case of they like your style of content. They have just found that you're, you, know, you have high views or you're in a certain niche area that they want, you hit a certain de target demographic, and so then they're reaching out to you. But if you start to separate yourself and think about it as just a service, then I think you'll be less invested, or like, this is the way I think about it, I'll be less invested in the insult of, we'd like you to make a video, which, I mean, you've seen, takes like a full day of work, plus the equipment, plus the experience I have for a free product, and the product's like, a flipping USB charger. That's insulting. <laughs> oh, that Ford Bronco looks nice. I think most of them look like toys, but that one, I don't have time to show you, sorry. Anyway, I uploaded yesterday's video. I'm gonna look at chopping up a load of clips from it using AI, see how that goes. I need to finish off the thumbnail. Still not really sure which direction I'm going on that. Oh, yes, powers. <laughs> Here's my thinking. These videos are meant to um, are meant to be super authentic, right? It's just raw crap, raw, raw content. And I don't want the thumbnail to give the viewer, like I don't want to spend tons of time on the thumbnail. I don't want the viewer to get the impression that they're 
coming in for a piece of content that's highly produced. And so maybe that's my answer. Like if you see a thumbnail that's highly produced, you're expecting something that's highly produced in terms of the video. Whereas if you see a very basic thumbnail, uh, how do I make a basic yet compelling, intriguing thumbnail? I also didn't wear the Heelys into Apple. I took them off. One, um, because while I don't care what other people think, I still didn't want to come a cropper, fall over inside of Apple. Right? That just I wasn't feeding that. But it gave birth to what will be tomorrow's video. Okay, we're going to learn how to ride them properly in preparation for the airport. Yeah learning to ride heedies because I don't want to slip a disc. I didn't really want to bore you with the process, but I thought I should show you. So I finished the thumbnail. All right, here are my different layers down here. You can see lots of crap in there. I really need to get better at organizing how I work through these projects. Uh, Essentially, we've got three layers here, by the way. We've got the text, me, and the background. <laughs> I got a weird one here. So this is just an AI background. Here's the prompt I used. And then threw in a photo of my, oh no, not that one, this one. Made some small color adjustments to make myself stand out a bit more. And then some text. No children, um, dunno, I thought, I thought it just kind of went. And then I tried to clip, like, so we have these AI generators, video tools that clip the video up into sections. I want, okay, this goes, this goes two ways. One is it would be cool if I could What, what am I saying? Okay. I want to be able to clip the content into small bits so that you can take it and create a, a fan page or something and make some money off of it. So like on TikTok, you can, since this is a two and a half hour video, you can clip one minute sections and you can start generating revenue off of that. In turn, that helps me because it gets my face out there and more of my clips out there. And hopefully people enjoy them. Um... I'm trying to figure out how to do it, and when I do, it may just be a case of a Google Drive folder with all the clips, and then you can just download them. But, I mean, it, I found three different sites so far. The first one doesn't seem to have done great. So, wizard.ai. It's taken the clip from YouTube. I think it's the best, like, it gives you the most in a free trial. But, as you can see, most of the clips are kind of horizontal, and then you have a vertical one here. I thought that's it's raw because it's it's. But I mean, the quality is so bad. But these are useless. I'm not going to post that. There's no point posting that. That doesn't. It's not going to do well on TikTok. So we'll see how video.ai, Opus Clip, and Clap do. Doing the same thing, but I have to. <laughs> I'll slowly get used to the fact that I do those on camera and I'm going to keep them in because I do them when I'm filming my TikToks and I just I just remove them. So yeah, like clap only allows I don't know what like 90 minutes of video so I need to cut it and then try again. I'll try it tonight and give you the results tomorrow. Which tomorrow will be, we're going to be taking on the Heelys. So we'll make that into a fun video tomorrow in preparation for the airport. Yeah, good day. See you, see you tomorrow. And fade out, fade out here.
Let's do it again. Did you do it? All right, one more. I'm the editor. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs>